pastry is made with flour, fat and water. Using different proportions of these ingredients produces a variety of different types of pastry, such as short crust, phyllo, rough puff and flaky. In this short video, master baker Anthony Kindred demonstrates how to make two different types of pastry. Flaky pastry, making sausage rolls, Eccles cakes and apple turnovers. And short crust pastry, making quiche, apple pie and jam tarts. When making pastry at school, keep the ingredients cool and make smaller pastry items which will cook more quickly. The aim of flaky pastry is to create layers without allowing the fat to melt. The equipment, ingredients, your hands and the room should be as cool as possible. The ingredients for flaky pastry include plain flour, butter, salt and water. We've opened the windows this morning trying to cool ourselves down but we're all really hot already. So If you sieve the flour it always incorporates a little bit of air into your pastry, give you a lighter pastry. In the recipes that you can get on the, the website, it just says plain flour, but for pastry you should look for slightly stronger flour than just a plain flour. So it would either be a bread making flour or one with a strong gluten content. Roll the butter around in the flour, that will stop it sticking to your fingers. And as you're grating just it, keep the flour onto it. Very, very easy to do it with butter, but you must have the butter very, very cold. We have the butter for you to use in the freezer. Use it as frozen as possible. The heat from your hands is going to cause a problem. As you know, when you pick up butter, it, it goes greasy in your fingers. So if you've got hot hands, dip them in one of the cold sinks and get them as cold as you can. Just have to combine the flour and the butter gently. Really, it's just tossing it in so you're not knocking the air out of the flour and you're not melting the butter with your fingers. The idea is you're, you're, you're actually breaking the butter rather than melting it into the flour. The fat will slowly coat the grains of flour rather than soak into it if it's oily. Take it to what feels like big lumps of breadcrumbs and then the, 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 this butter is actually just starting to melt in my fingers now so it's about as far as I can go without making the, the pastry too oily. Just to sprinkle the water across the top it will start to combine. You can use a palette knife if you think your hands are too warm that's when you would use a knife but I find that if you're using your fingers you can actually feel what you're doing with a knife it's a bit remote. If it's a little bit too sticky you can dust the table, you can dust your hands, you'll get a little bit sticky to you but that, that again is the gluten just sticking to everything. So if it goes from there wrapped up in a little polythene bag or a polythene sheet back in the fridge 30 minutes 25 minutes just to get the butter back cold and hard again. Resting the pastry allows the gluten to relax which helps to prevent the pastry shrinking when cooked. Unrested pastry may also become slightly greasy during cooking, as some of the fat could be released. Sausage rolls. Begin by rolling the pastry out to three or four millimetres thick. When gently rolling out the pastry, give it a quarter of a turn every couple of rolls to help smooth out the dips. Trim the pastry to a long rectangular shape. Sausage rolls are made in a long sausage first and then trimmed into smaller portions. The sausage roll filling is made by mixing sausage meat, breadcrumbs and sage together. Other ingredients such as onions and pepper can be added. The breadcrumbs help to absorb the oil from the sausage meat. Roll the sausage meat out into a long thin strip. Use a lightly floured work surface to help prevent the sausage meat sticking. Trim the ends of the sausage roll filling to the size of the pastry. Wet one side of the pastry with water or an egg wash to stick the pastry together. Fold the pastry over to create a line down the side. Carefully roll the line underneath the sausage roll. Cut the long strips into pieces, about the length of your thumb. Space the sausage rolls apart on the baking tray. Cut a few slashes along the top of each sausage roll. These will open up during cooking. The sausage rolls can be egg washed before they go into the oven. Bake for approximately 15 minutes until golden. Eccles Cakes First, cut out circles from the rolled out pastry. The Eccles Cake filling consists of raisins, sugar, butter, mixed spice. While mixing the ingredients together, Try to damage the skin of the raisins to allow the butter and sugar to mix together. The filling can be made the day before to help develop the flavour. 
Cover a third of the pastry circle with the mixture before bringing up two sides of the circle to meet at the top. Then bring the other two edges up to the top to create a pastry parcel. Finally, turn over and gently press the parcel down with a little flour. The raisins should just break into the pastry, but not come through. The Eccles cakes can then be coated in sugar. This can be done by washing each Eccles cake with a little water and either placing them into a bowl of sugar or sprinkling the sugar on top. Bake for approximately 15 minutes until golden. Apple turnovers. The raisin filling can be swapped for chopped apple mixed with lemon juice and sugar to create an apple turnover. The circles of pastry are gently rolled out from the centre before water is brushed alongside the outside. A small amount of filling is placed in the middle before the pastry is folded over the filling. Piercing a few small holes in the top of the turnover will allow the steam to escape during cooking. As with the Eccles cakes, the apple turnovers can be coated with sugar to give these a crunchy top. Bake for approximately 15 minutes until golden. Short crust pastry is made by rubbing fat into sifted flour with the fingertips. Adding flour to the fingertips will help prevent the fat sticking. The floury flakes should be dropped from a height to cool the fat and aerate it, making the finished pastry lighter. The ingredients for short crust pastry include plain flour, softened lard, softened butter, salt and water. Short crust pastry can go very, very tough once you've mixed the water into the flour. If it's not right, it gets tough. The gluten is too strong. So you could use a slightly softer flour for the short crust pastry. But again, it's the same idea. If you get air into it at the beginning, it's going to be a lighter pastry when you're finished. The fats that you use for short crust pastry are best at room temperature. Don't put them in the fridge, just use them straight at room temperature. Equal quantities for this recipe of the lard and the butter, which is actually half the weight of the flour. And again, this one we're just going to coat all of the flour with the fat. You can use a knife if you're not happy with the, the fats on your fingers. But again, as long as your fingers aren't too warm, it, it'll mix in very, very easy. It's not warm enough to have melted it or gone oily. It's still quite a dry feel to it. You can do this part of short crust pastry in a food processor or a mixer, but I wouldn't do the adding the water to it on a machine because it can over mix it. It's a very, very quick, just a few seconds. Just add some water to combine all the ingredients. If you'd like to make a, a sweet pastry, you can add a little bit of sugar in with the water just to sweeten it up. The final consistency of both these pastries changes. You're looking for something that's nice and soft, easy to roll out, easy to cut and use. The, the water that you've added will soak into the gluten, soak into the flour, so it may be very, very soft now. In half an hour or so, it'll, it'll feel quite different. And it, again, the same as the other pastry now, it needs to rest in the fridge for 25 or 30 minutes. Quiche. Remember to turn the pastry a quarter way around in order to stretch the dough evenly when rolling the pastry out. When cutting out pastry bases, always allow a few extra centimetres around the baking tin. Gently drop the pastry base into the tin and then push it back to fit snugly. Do not stretch the pastry into the tin because it will shrink back when resting or baking. Use the back of a knife to trim off any extra pastry from the top. Pierce the base to prevent any air between the tin and pastry rising up and causing bubbles during cooking. If the base does rise up, it can be gently pressed back down. Bake the base for 10 to 15 minutes before putting any filling in to prevent the fluid or liquid soaking into the bottom. Add the dry ingredients to the pastry case first before adding the egg filling. This is because the case can be filled with too much egg and food is not dropped into the liquid which may create a mess. The quiche can be placed on a baking tray to make it easier to place into the oven. Bake for approximately 35 to 40 minutes until golden. Apple pie. Line the tin and press the filling into the base. Short crust pastry becomes tougher when it is re-rolled. The gluten is being stretched and the dough changes texture. It can break apart and lose its elasticity. The first rolling can be used for the lid of the pies and the re-rolled pastry used to create the base. The two halves of the pastry can be joined by pressing them together using the thumbs. Use the back of a knife to trim off any extra pastry from the top. Create a hole in the pastry lid to allow steam to escape before baking the apple pie for approximately 35 to 40 minutes. 
The apple pie can be sprinkled with icing sugar or caster sugar after it has been baked. Jam tarts. Leftover pastry can be used to make jam tarts. If the pastry does not knit back together, a little more fat can be added to the dough to help. This is done by rubbing a very small amount in with the tips of your fingers. Firstly, roll the pastry out thinly. Select a cutter which is slightly larger than the size of the patty tin or foil case and cut out circles of pastry. Next, press the pastry firmly into the foil cases. This needs to be done firmly as the pastry has been re-rolled and will shrink back. Finally, fill the pastry shells three quarters full with jam. Place on a baking tray to cook for 10 to 15 minutes. Remember, all these pastry products were made using the three basic ingredients flour, fat and water in different proportions. Why not try making these for yourself?